Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you are new to the channel and this analysis, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back and I always hope that you find every week the uh, analysis to be useful when applying supply and demand to your own trading. Um, just to let you know as well that there are links in the description box below of the charts I'm about to analyze in this week's videos. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find this useful. So starting off uh, this week on the fundamentals and looking at the week ahead. So the big news is gonna be non-farm payrolls. So uh, US jobs reports uh, will be keenly watched alongside ISM PMIs, uh, foreign trade balance, uh, construction spending and factory orders, uh, UK market PMIs and monetary indicators as well. Um, Germany factory orders, that's gonna be uh, probably big for Europe at the moment. You know, Germany is um, under a bit of pressure and Germany is Europe's, you know, real powerhouse. So anything that happens to Germany um, with regards to a slowdown um, or um, I guess an increase in productivity affects pretty much the whole of Europe. Um, China, NBS and Caxin PMIs, Japan, business sentiment and consumer confidence, Australia, trade balance, retail sales and building permits. Um, and investors will react to the RBA policy meeting. So policy meeting, basically the um, Reserve Bank of Australia, um, cash rate on Tuesday, 5.30 UK time, um, are looking to actually cut rates where the expectation is for a rate cut, which they're hoping, um, I guess the uh, forecasters, the economists, and even the RBA uh, have said that they're in their interest rate uh, cutting cycle so they want to make the currency cheaper which should boost uh, the economy um, in regards to business investment um, and things like that so um, we should see potentially a weaker uh, um, Aussie dollar um, if it hasn't already been being priced in now um, what else do we have this week uh, US China trade talks G20 is going on at the moment and the OPEC meeting. So again, as far as headlines goes, um, there was a Bloomberg article. So Trump goes to North Korea. I think he's the first US president to set foot in uh, North Korea. Um, so it looks like things are going, um, uh, I guess, uh, decent with regards to relations with North Korea. So less risk off. Um, let's refresh this page again. Reuters um, headline: Johnson vows to spend to boost infrastructure. It has to do with the UK, so um, he's putting his bid forward regarding uh, Brexit. And it's still, definitely in the cards with regards to um, sell trades on 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 the pound. Um, and headlines after surprise: Trump Kim meeting U.S. North Korea to reopen talks. So that's positive. And the market watch headline um, again is Trump to ease Huawei ban as US China trade talk negotiation restarts. So it looks like potentially, depends on what, obviously what happens um, in Sunday open, um, uh, and we'll see uh, if there's a bit more uh, risk on regarding the positivity um, for the G20. So let's look at the uh, technicals now. And we start off on the Dow Jones dollar index, Dow Jones dollar index. So from last week, what we had was prices come down into a level of demand. And um, this week kind of, you know, didn't really hold this level. It had been touched several times, to be fair. If we draw, if we were to draw a um, demand zone from here, it would have touched once. You know, we've considered all of that once, twice, and usually on the third time, um, the uh, the level tends to uh, want to break it bit, you know the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes so um the lower level was a fresher area of demand you can see where it's kind of held at this level this week um us gdp came out at 3.1 um above expectations which was is really good so potentially um uh i guess uh decreasing the probability of a 
potential rate cut. So um, when we look at updating the charts, let's go to US dollar. And the um, US dollar index is really just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the Euro, Yen, and the British pound, as well as the, um, the Australian dollar as well. So we're down into this demand zone. So what we want to look for, if you're looking to buy the dollar based on our fundamentals and sentiment, um, is really like, you know, for prices to um, to become bullish around this area here. And as they become bullish, that should add weight to any dollar uh, cross trade. So for example, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, right? You're looking for buy trades, um, you know, uh, on those um, currency pairs. When we look at as well um, yearly lows to yearly highs, we are actually at fair value. So um, fair value on the dollar from 2019 lows. That's the lowest it's ever been this year, and that's the high. We've had a bit of a pullback into fair value. So the dollar is, I think, is worth um, worth a buy. It's still the best currency um, out of the worst regarding you know the economy and even uh, monetary policy wise so um for me a dollar is a buy but if you do want to uh get short i think your next shorting opportunity would be if prices you know break this demand zone then you'd be looking at getting back short into some sort of uh supply zone from there so that would create a supply zone or you'd have to really wait for prices to come all the way up to here for you know prices and then um, you know buy trades or sorry, I should say sell trades at supply around here but um, for now I think the dollar is a buy the dollar really has been a buy for a while even though there's been some negative sentiment um, it just means that we can buy the dollar for cheaper so moving on to the dollar yen the dollar yen uh, this week press play come down into this demand zone here and it's reacted nicely off of that and the, that demand zone was basically from way back I can't, can't really see it on the uh, replay but we'll go to the chart and have a look and it was from here now why did I draw it from here and not cover this whole area here really in truth because the uh, you know this was more of an algorithm spike so um, if we don't take into account the algorithm spike, then this would be really the true uh, demand zone here at, you know, uh, way back when in 2018, in April 2018. So um, it was a decent level to look for some um, potential long trades <coughs> if you were trying to pick the, the absolute lows. But um, now that we know there is some proven demand there at that 107 level, you could be waiting for prices to potentially pull back into that area before looking at long trades. And again, risk would have to really be, um, I guess, less off or even on um, for you to want to buy the dollar against the yen. If you are looking to short the yen, um, sorry, short the dollar against the yen, and that would be, again, if risk off tends to come into the market and risk off is basically uh, risk sentiment, um, safe haven plays if there is you know talk of again global slowdown g20 summit meeting comes out as being um you know a bit hostile maybe and you know no agreements and further away from kind of coming together um then you know you probably want to look for shorts within this supply zone here as this was proof of value for the japanese yen but i think uh i want to be a buyer of the dollar again so potentially waiting for pullbacks into this level here or if prices do you know end up going higher then i think that might be i can't see at the moment if that is uh what was that be one old open seven six okay so it's opened and closed at the same same price so really you're waiting for price to kind of come up to here before or come down to here before looking at any kind of demand zones um, and uh, a buy trade on the dollar yen moving on to the dollar swiss 
the dollar Swiss um, has come down into a really, really nice zone where I want to be uh, a buyer. There was an opportunity down here um, um, on one of the time frames that we trade, but um, I actually missed it. I think I was a bit busy, didn't look at the chart at the time, but looking for probably a pullback for me anyway, um, into anywhere around this 97 to 97.50 round number, um, around the half number before looking at potential longs, if not down to the lows. So let's go to the chart, dollar Swiss. And yeah, so looking at potential, if we can get, you know, a bit of a move down and then a move up. Um, and if not, price would have to come higher. That would create a nice demand zone here and then wait for a pullback into that demand zone before getting long. Um, if you are looking to trade the Swiss, um, buy the Swiss franc over the uh, dollar based off risk off sentiment, then you'd be looking for either prices to come all the way up to here into this supply zone or for prices to make new lows this week. And as it makes a new low, lower low creates a supply zone at the lower high so you would be waiting for price to come back up to here before looking at short trades to the downside so um, and again that's if you believe that the Swiss franc is undervalued at this price the uh, next pair I want to look at is the dollar CAD dollar CAD has come down again into a nice demand zone it did react off of that higher demand zone but this lower one I think was a bit more significant the one three one round number and again just like um the i think it was a dollar dollar yen um it's come down into its year no sorry it was the uh, dollar index but it's come down into its yearly lows so dollar swiss sorry dollar cad here we go if you look at you know, 2019 lows to the 2019 highs. We are down into the lowest point now. Again, the question you have to ask is, what is going to make the dollar either get weaker here, um, or the CAD gets stronger for you to, you know, want to get short here, or is the dollar undervalued against the Canadian dollar? So. Um, Again, I think it's a decent uh, shorting potential, I mean, sorry, a long potential opportunity, apologies, um, for any kind of dollar trades. What we also have in that area is an area of some support and resistance. So it's a bit of a wide zone. So support and resistance. All right. And what you have is resistance, resistance, support, bit of support and resistance within that area. Resistance, resistance, and again, some support, support. So we're in a prime area for not only uh, demand traders who understand that they're buying a potential value, but you also have technical traders who trade support and resistance levels looking at this area here, potentially this one free, one round number. Um, putting in a bit of a pin bar here um, so decent if not I think the next level down <coughs> is going to be probably the lows of that area so again around that one three zero round number so those are potentially the uh, uh, the areas to look for some uh, long trades if you're looking to get long if you're looking to get short and buy the Canadian dollar, then this area here is going to be your short, your first short trade in order to get the opportunity to buy the CAD. So, yeah, for the price to really kind of retrace back up and then look for short trades. If not, then it's going to be around this 1342 level. Next is the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And the New Zealand dollar is, um, I think, has been quite undervalued um, overall. Um, it's one of the uh, best, um, I think, uh, from a fundamental perspective, 
over the past month or so has been um, the, the, the figures and data have been actually very positive. They didn't they didn't cut rates um, recently, even though they probably are dovish, but they uh, held rates. So um, that was ended up being quite positive for them. So you can see basically the, uh, the New Zealand dollar um, has been a decent, decent buy. Um, against the US dollar though, um, it wasn't necessarily, the, the would have been the best trade to get short, but um, there was an opportunity, you know, around here on a lower time frame trade, it did sell off a little bit. But um, overall, um, I think it's gone through those supply zones now. What we're gonna do is look at um, any other opportunities, clean up the chart a little bit. It's actually created what is known as hidden demand in this area here. We can get rid of that level there and then look for potential short trades if you want to buy the US dollar at and around that area there. Right, you got support, 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 a bit of supply. So anyway, the underside and above areas to look for short trades. And if you're looking to get long, you're looking for prices to kind of come back to this demand zone before looking at getting long. Um, so yeah, pretty decent. I can move probably this demand zone now. It's created quite a large demand zone. so. That would be where, because the last bearish candle before prices make a new high. So um, the miles are up to here now and uh, looking for some potential long trades. If you are looking at that lower area of demand, I think there is going to be the top end of that would be a decent area to look for long trades. So. Um, yeah, decent, I think a decent short opportunity around here. And especially because when you think about how many days and candles it's gone positive. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten positive days. You know, you're due at least some sort of a pullback um, or at least a pause within an area. And we could get it, you know, coming into this um, 0 0.673 uh, to 6.7. 0 0.678 level so we could see a bit of a sell-off profit taking from these guys um, and if you bought down here then you have to sell to exit so that adds to the supply and demand equation when we're looking at supply zones um, moving on to the pound dollar the pound dollar there's been like I said a sell um, decent sell here right um, Got involved in this on, on an eight hour time frame chart, but from a daily perspective, you know, price to come up into this level here, right? And then above that level, price is spiked, taking out some stops, a bit of a stop hunt um, uh, that, that had occurred here. Um, and then prices hopefully should be on their way down. The reason why you would buy the British pound, um, I have no idea, especially because obviously. Um, a lot of uncertainty around Brexit um, and what the what the deal is potentially going to be with Europe, and uh, the longer that continues up until at least the thirty first of October, um, the pound for me is not necessarily the best buy in the world. It doesn't mean that the pound can't go higher. You know the markets are manipulated, etc. But um, you know for me, I think it's just uh, about shorting. You know the pound for the foreseeable future until such things you know regarding brexit changes so um if we start to see and hear about um i guess a deal being done then um, that would be positive sentiment and uh, you could see the pound start to rally but until that you know such time it's really just short trades again prices come back up into anywhere around here looking for potential short trades if you are looking to get long on the uh, the British pound versus the US dollar you'd be looking for prices to come down to here first of all the top end of that level right and then maybe the lower end um, you know the one two six round number or just below that and then down to the one two 
1.25 round number at the absolute lows. So um, for me, uh, the pound is um, a short trade. If this you know doesn't work out, then you just look for supply zones further up around here, and that gives us a better exchange rate, a cheaper exchange rate in order to buy the dollar right against the uh, the British pound in order for us to get shorts. So let me just extend this the other side. And um, moving on to the euro dollar. So euro dollar this week, we did come up into this round number. I was saying this last week, I think there's a definitely a shorting opportunity around here and there was a nice entry candle that we got involved in. Um, you know, break even now, it's a break even trade so we can't necessarily lose on this. Um, I do expect this to potentially go a bit lower um, but if it does go higher again, it just presents a buying opportunity uh, for us to buy the dollar for cheaper as the, you know, Europe isn't necessarily um, fantastic at the moment. So um, we've got a level here. If, again, if this trade doesn't work out, we're looking at anywhere around here, around above, the, above these highs. Um, if you are looking at buying the Euro, then really the first opportunity is either going to be here or if prices do create that new high then it creates a demand zone around here and then you'd have to wait for price to come back into this area before looking at you know potential long trades but that's only until prices make a new higher high and then they'd have to pull back into that demand zone but um, for this week I think uh, nothing but short trades if you can get in on anything right I'm short wise um, I think it's a decent short around this uh, this area here, this price area there. Um, so moving on to the euro yen, the euro yen this week, I think has been less risk off. Risk off is still in in the market, but you know the euro's rallied slightly. You get pullbacks. Um, supply zone didn't really hold on this one. It did because you kind of got the um, you know that prices back up into it and then kind of come down so it was a uh, was an opportunity but this week it wasn't prices did come up into this area but you know kind of pulled back and then decided to go a bit higher so um, as far as opportunities to get long or short in order to buy the yen you're going to have to believe that the yen is undervalued here and also that risk off is going to come into the market right so if risk off comes into the market then this is a decent short from this area um, or preferably probably up to the highs around this one two three fifty level right there's a fresher area of, of, of supply um, if you're looking to buy the euro against the yen this is going to be your first area as you've created a higher high higher low so if you're waiting for pull back into that area and then look for long trades. If not, the second area is all the way down into this one, two, zero, uh, one, two, one level around here. It's fine though, because we've only touched it what, once. So a second touch should be okay if you're looking to get long. We potentially may be entering into a ranging market after this trending market here. So um, yeah, shorts or longs within this area. You know, these highs and these lows. Um, are decent uh, present decent opportunities but again if you're if you're shorting this make sure that you know risk is you know off you want to see the headlines really talk about um, you know potential trade wars and things like that so um, <clears throat> moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie US dollar is uh, Aussie trading dollars been going higher and higher there was a little bit of a supply zone in this area here it did react slightly but nothing major and now we're literally climbing and I do think that it's setting up for a, uh, a short trade we do have the interest rate um, expectations coming into the market um, so uh, this you know prices have pulled back nicely you know to expect you know potential short just be careful though because uh, if you are shorting um, the market's tend to get manipulated right 
because everybody is expecting for there to be a rate cut and what happens with a rate cut you expect um, prices you know to go to basically fall away right where am I right so sort of for prices to kind of fall away yeah and to uh, to buy the actual US dollar but what you might see and what's been happening recently over the past few months with um, interest rate cuts and holds is that you'll get a move in the opposite direction clearing out and drawing in traders to you know the uh, wrong direction before going on its intended direction so in the lead up to the um, the rate cut what you may see is you know prices maybe you know start to maybe drift off then a rate cut comes out and all of a sudden you maybe get a spike to the upside yeah where prices you know will draw in traders or take out you know short stops and then go in its intended direction to the downside yeah so um, just be careful um, when if you're trading that in real time probably wait for you know the dust to settle potentially and then look for some short trades and that's just um, trading advice not financial advice so um, me personally I'm, I'm, I'm shorts all the way um, especially if you watched last week as well uh, there are some big financial institutions that are also short on the Australian dollar and again these are kind of like the trading opportunities so anywhere probably from now up into this maybe 0 0.76 0 0.0 um, 0 0 0 0 0.706 level yeah around here if not again if prices start coming higher it just means that we can buy the dollar for cheaper and try and get in short around there and finally the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen this week bit of a pullback um, you know into some supply zones bit of a risk less risk risk off coming into the market and uh, now potential shorting opportunities if you believe that risk off is going to come into the market also with a potential rate cut coming into the market this could be a decent sell but you'd really want to consider um, you know uh, the, the yen is the yen the best um, currency to short the Australian dollar against um, again that's a question for you my opinion is not really unless again risk is off at the same time so um, and when I say risk off we're in a risk off environment um, but really if uh, th there's um, you know the headlines really start to kind of change at the moment again looking at you know Bloomberg um, you're seeing handshakes you know and things like that uh, with uh, I think market watch as well I think you might be seeing you know uh, some some talking positive kind of headlines etc so um, again just be careful when shorting here just manage your, your stops and uh, look for short trades if you are looking for long trades then what I'm gonna do is get rid of that if there is any kind of positive news coming out of Australia um, or globally out of China as well because China is Australia's biggest trade partner then you want to look for a pullback into any of these zones before looking at long trades and there's a bit of a level here a bit of resistance there as well um, to add to that buy trade so <coughs> from a technical analysis perspective we've come to an end and uh, the end of this video and hope you enjoyed it uh, please like subscribe and share to your fellow traders um, if you have any questions please get in touch um, this this week I have been very busy and I do and I will get back to um, you know any traders that have uh, you know made any kind of comments as well so guys I hope you have a great trading week and take care